Top 10 Facts of Colon Cancer in Men and Women In the United States, colon cancer is the fourth most common type of cancer diagnosed each year. Colon cancer occurs in both men and women but it is more common in men, and in black men in particular. For these reasons, it's important that both men and women understand their individual risk of colon cancer by working with a healthcare provider. Further, we must call upon those who work in public health to include people of minority groups in their outreach and in further colorectal cancer research. This video brought to you by Top 10 Best Facts channel, that will give you all the best facts, about life, lifestyle changes, anything and everything the world can offer. With all cancers, there are many reasons why there are differences in how men and women are affected. This may have to do with biological differences such as anatomy or hormone production. There can be lifestyle factors or disparities in care that can influence how many men or women develop that cancer and experience different outcomes. Variations in diet, lifestyle choices, as well as access to care and cultural attitudes surrounding cancer screening may all contribute to how men and women are affected differently by colon cancer. All of these factors come together in a complicated mesh to drive the increased risk of developing colon cancer, and of dying from it. 1. Signs and symptoms of colon cancer are essentially the same in both men and women. The location of the tumor may have an effect on some symptoms. For instance, a tumor lower in the digestive tract may cause bright red blood in the stool while one that is higher up may cause stools to be tarry or black. While they may vary slightly based on the location of the cancer in the colon, the typical symptoms of colon cancer include abdominal bloating, cramps, or pain, black or tarry stools, blood in or on the stool, change in bowel habits, going to the toilet more or less frequently than usual, diarrhea, constipation, fatigue, feeling that the bowel does not empty, tenesmus, narrow stools, unintended weight loss, vomiting. The signs and symptoms of colon cancer can be similar to those caused by other conditions that are more common, such as a viral or bacterial infection, or hemorrhoids. This is why it is important to go over changes in bowel movements with a doctor. Blood in the stool is never normal and should be discussed with a physician, even when there is already a diagnosis of a condition like hemorrhoids or inflammatory bowel disease IBD. The symptoms of colon cancer that men experience may differ slightly from those that women do. This is because, in men, cancer in the last part of the large intestine, the sigmoid colon, and in the rectum are more common. For women, cancer tends to be located further up in the large intestine, where it is more challenging to diagnose. Even with being diagnosed at an earlier stage, colon cancer is still more deadly overall in men than it is in women. One of the reasons is differences in hormones, because female hormones may offer some protection when it comes to colon cancer. Lifestyle, including a pro-inflammatory diet, obesity, and lack of exercise also play a role. These factors negatively affect men more than they do women when it comes to increasing the risk of colon cancer. 2. Risk Factor in Cancer Rate in Men and Women In the United States, men of all ethnicities develop colon cancer in greater numbers than do women. Black men have the highest rate out of all ethnicities that have been studied. Overall, the rate of colon cancer is falling about 2% each year but there is a worrying trend of younger people being diagnosed. There are risk factors for colon cancer that can't be changed, such as age, genetics, and having IBD or a condition that causes the growth of polyps. There are several other factors that may give a bigger picture as to why men are more affected by colon cancer than women. There are a number of risk factors that may increase the chance of developing colon cancer. If you have any of these risk factors, you should discuss options with your doctor. Risk factors for colon cancer fall into two categories, those that can be changed and those that can't. Risk factors that could be changed include lifestyle-related factors. Being overweight or obese, being sedentary and not exercising regularly, a diet high in red meat or processed meats, being low in vitamin D, smoking, alcohol use, even light to moderate use. Some risk factors, however, cannot be changed. 
These include being older, having inflammatory bowel disease, IBD, like Crohn's or ulcerative colitis, a family history of colon cancer or polyps, a personal history of polyps, being African-American, having Lynch syndrome, a hereditary colorectal cancer syndrome. The lifetime risk for colorectal cancer for people with Lynch syndrome might be as high as 50%, depending on the genes impacted. Women with Lynch syndrome are also at a very high risk for cancer in the endometrium, lining of the uterus. Whether you have risk factors you can modify through lifestyle changes or risk factors that are beyond your control, it is important to discuss your risk and any symptoms with your doctor. 3. Obesity and tobacco used. The rate of obesity in men, and black men and Hispanic men, is increasing in the United States. Studies have shown that obesity is a factor in developing colon cancer. People who have a higher body mass index and waist circumference have a greater risk of developing colon cancer. This was found to be true in dozens of studies done in several countries. A lack of physical activity is also associated with an increased rate of colon cancer. Most people in the United States do not reach the level of physical activity recommended, putting them at risk for cancers that are associated with inactivity. Smoking tobacco cigarettes is another known risk factor for the development of colon cancer. The number of adults who smoke in the United States is decreasing. Smoking is more common in women than it is in men, and especially among older men. Men also tend to smoke more cigarettes per day and for more years than women do. Cancer in the left side of the colon tends to be more common in men who smoke. 4. Alcohol consumption and hormonal replacement therapy. Men have higher rates of alcohol consumption, including binge drinking, than do women. Alcohol consumption is a contributing factor to the development of colon cancer. Of particular concern is with consuming more than two alcoholic drinks per day, which is associated with a higher risk hormone replacement therapy. Studies have shown that hormone replacement therapy, HRT, after menopause can lower the risk of colorectal cancers in women, though this is still under investigation. The decision to begin HRT should not be based just on the risk of colon cancer. Taking estrogenic and progesterone after menopause can increase a woman's risk for a variety of diseases as well as lung and breast cancer. You should discuss the benefits and risks of HRT with your doctor. Dot. 5. Red and processed meat consumption. There is some evidence that eating a diet higher in red meat, beef, and processed meats, such as sausage, lunch meat, and hot dogs, is associated with a higher risk of colorectal cancer. The exact nature of how much risk is involved is not well understood. Men are more likely to have a diet that is higher in these types of food, than women which may contribute to higher cancer rates. 6. IBD, Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. Having a diagnosis of IBD, and ulcerative colitis in particular, is a factor in developing colon cancer. The risk increases after eight years of having the disease. How well the IBD is managed also plays a role. Continuous inflammation from IBD that is not well managed is more closely associated with colon cancer. Having disease throughout the colon, called extensive colitis or pancolitis, is also connected to increased risk. In the United States, men and women develop IBD in similar numbers. IBD is not a risk factor that is specific to men, but it is significant because IBD is lifelong. 7. Precancerous lesions, polyps, colon cancer begins with growths on the interior walls of the colon called polyps. When polyps are removed during a colonoscopy, they are no longer a cancer risk. Men tend to develop polyps in their colon at younger ages than do women. Colon polyps are slow growing but they may develop in some people who have not yet reached the age for a colon cancer screening. One study showed that men may start developing polyps, on average, 10 years before women do. Polyps are not a risk factor that can be changed but screening for colon cancer may help find and remove them before they become cancerous, malignant. Colon cancer can also occur in people who have no identifiable or obvious risk factors. Colon cancer may be prevented with screening because when a polyp is removed, 
it does not have the chance to become cancerous. Colon cancer in its early stages is quite treatable, making early diagnosis critical to good outcomes. 8. Hereditary conditions. Another factor that influences the risk of colon cancer are rare conditions that cause the growth of polyps. These include hereditary nonpolyposis colorectal cancer, Lynch syndrome, familial adenomatous polyposis, Gardner's syndrome, MYH-associated polyposis, Hoyts-Jeggers syndrome, and serrated polyposis syndrome. Having a family history of one of these conditions is important in assessing the risk for colon cancer. Most of these conditions appear to affect men and women similarly. However, men with Lynch syndrome have a higher risk of developing colon cancer than do women with the same condition. 9. Cancer survival in men and women. While screening is an important tool in finding colon cancer early, many adults in the US do not receive any screening. Almost 30% of adults have never been screened for colon cancer using any of the approved tests. Not having any health insurance and not having a regular healthcare provider are major reasons why people do not have their recommended screening tests. People who live outside of urban areas, and people of Hispanic, American Indian, or Alaska Native heritage were also more likely to not have any screening. Screening methods for colon cancer include stool tests, specialized X-rays, computed tomography CT, and endoscopy tests such as sigmoidoscopy and colonoscopy. Only a colonoscopy offers the chance to see the entire length of the colon and also to remove any polyps. Men are less likely to be aware of the need for screening for cancer than are women. Men are more likely to go through with a colonoscopy than women are, but this only occurs when one is offered to them by their healthcare provider. Further complicating the issue of early diagnosis is that men, in general, tend to be less aware of the symptoms of cancer. Studies show that men have more trouble recalling signs and symptoms related to their bowel and bladder habits. However, when men recognize that they are experiencing symptoms that require care, they are just as likely as women to seek it. The number of men and women diagnosed at the more advanced stages of colon cancer is roughly similar. Young women tend to fare the best after a colon cancer diagnosis, and older women the worst. However, men have a lower overall length of survival than women. It's thought that the many lifestyle and genetic factors affecting risk in men and the differences in hormones between the sexes may be some of the reasons for this effect on survival. There are many identified risks of colon cancer. Some are tied to lifestyle and others are factors beyond anyone's control, such as family history, sex, genetic conditions, and age. Colon cancer tends to start at a younger age in men than it does in women. Black men in particular are at a greater risk of both developing colon cancer and dying from it. Changes to guidelines that call for screening tests in younger people may help address some of this issue. There is a significant amount of research about colon cancer in general, but there is not enough when it comes to understanding how it affects minority groups, and men of ethnic minorities in particular. The reasons why younger people are being affected and especially young men in minority groups are still not well understood. For these reasons, it's important that both men and women understand their individual risk of colon cancer by working with a healthcare provider. We must call upon those who work in public health to include people of minority groups in their outreach and in further colorectal cancer research. Early stage, not everyone will experience early symptoms of colon cancer, and they may vary depending on the size and location of the cancer. If symptoms are present, they may include changes in bowel habits that last longer than a few days. This may include a change to the consistency of stools, diarrhea, or constipation. Bright red bleeding from the rectum, bloody stools that may make stools appear brown or black, pain or cramping in the abdomen, unintended weight loss, weakness and fatigue, feelings that the bowel doesn't completely empty with a bowel movement advanced stage. If left undiagnosed, colon cancer can lead to complications and serious symptoms. These include cancer spreading to the lymph nodes, cancer spreading to other organs in the body like the liver, blockages in the colon, causing bowel obstructions. 10. Colon cancer symptoms versus gynecological issues. 
The median age of diagnosis of colon cancer in women is 72, compared with 68 in men. Colon cancer is more likely to affect older women who are no longer menstruating, however, the number of people under 55 diagnosed with colon cancer is increasing. Between 2007 and 2016, the incidence of colon cancer increased by 2% every year for those younger than 55. Some of the symptoms of colon cancer may be mistaken for normal symptoms of menstruation or other gynecological issues. These symptoms include abdominal cramping that could be mistaken for menstrual cramps, changes to bowel habits, diarrhea, and constipation that are also common during menstruation, feelings of tiredness that could be dismissed as being due to premenstrual syndrome, when to see a doctor, any changes to bowel habits, bleeding from the rectum, blood in the stools, abdominal discomfort, and unintended weight loss are all symptoms that should be discussed with your doctor. If you have risk factors for colon cancer, you should discuss colon cancer screening options with your doctor. Colon cancer screening allows doctors to find colon cancer even if a person isn't experiencing symptoms. Colon cancer often begins with abnormal growths in the colon called polyps. Screening tests, like stool tests or colonoscopy, can find these polyps before they become cancerous, which then allows your doctor to remove them before they become an issue. Regular screening also allows doctors to find cancer in the colon early when treatments are most effective. Even if you are under the recommended age for screening, your doctor may advise you to begin regular screening due to your risk factors. Colon cancer can be a frightening disease to think about, and distinguishing between the symptoms of colon cancer and symptoms of menstruation or gynecological issues can be difficult for women. Remember, just because you have symptoms, doesn't mean you necessarily have colon cancer. If you are ever in doubt or are experiencing symptoms, you should speak with your doctor. Regular screening means colon cancers can be detected early, when treatments are most effective. You can lower your chance of colon cancer through easy steps like maintaining a healthy weight, exercising, and following a healthy lifestyle. Any comments and suggestion on this video write down below. Thank you for watching, see you on my next video, Marsalama.